And just to mention that we had so many people ask about that instructor edition from the fundamental skills series last week. It was phenomenal. So I think I'm going to show you some great things today about this instructor edition that goes with this pre GED. And as I've done with each series, I have a think about question and just think um, how you can use at least one of the strategies that we're going to talk about. So this is a familiar uh, frame to you. Uh, um, like we have done in the last two spotlight webinars, I just wanted to mention the significant structure of spiral curriculum and how it's used in curriculum development and in the classroom. You can do it for teaching strategies also. Um, in the curriculum design, it really reinforces um, skills that are presented, but then it's repeatedly presented throughout curriculum, but it goes into that deeper layer of complexity each time, and it reinforces the skills and the concepts using different application, which is so very important. And um, for those of you that have heard me, didn't introduce myself, but I think most of you know me by Chris Miller, um, and I've been in adult ed for over 30 years. When I started teaching, is what I did for the first 12 years, um, it was one time when I was working with this gentleman, and he went to take his GED, he came back. He did not pass the GED, and I thought, oh my goodness, what, what happened? And so as I was talking with him about his experience on that test, he said, you know, there was nothing on that test that you, you taught me. Those of you that have been to my presentations at conferences, you've heard this story before, so you know how it goes, but it was like, you know, yeah, we, we did cover a lot of those things you're telling me about, but you know what, it, it hit me that what did not happen was that I did not teach him the application of those skills um, to the point where when he saw the skill, when he recognized he needed to use something, he didn't understand it in the context because he was limited by what we were doing in class and not the application. So I think that as we work through this spiral curriculum, we see that this spiral curriculum, the design of it really reinforces um, the skill, but it also with the different applications and being applied in different ways, the student really gets to the the point where they say, oh, this is the skill that I need for this particular problem. So it's not just teaching skills, y'all. It is the application, the teaching of the application that is so important. But anyway, this process, um, it really slowly creates what we call residual knowledge. And that's just because it is repeated exposure to the same skill and concept only in a different way. And from that process, it really uh, complements more with well, how our, our brains really work, it, rather than just striving to remember that whole complex comp concept at one time, it, 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 it does it gradually and it repeats itself. So. It really does give our learners the advantage of going back to some of their previous course skills that they've learned. And it, it's similar to like adding new details to old knowledge. That's the way I look at it. And then this new knowledge uh, has a context that it can attach itself to. And that's where you built on those previous lessons in previous classes. And another great feature of this is using the spiral structure in a way that it allows for making connections between topics of other subjects too. So as we go through, and I want to, I found this wonderful diagram. Uh, this, I'm not gonna take credit for it. I didn't do it, but it was a man called Norman Herr. I have that listed right down at the very bottom. But this great example that uh, Norman Herr put together, he developed this diagram um, that is a great visual, I think. I, I'm such a visual learner, um, but it's a great visual of how spiral curriculum is used in China uh, for teaching science compared and in contrast to the layered curriculum approach that is used in the United States. So if we look at, 
and I get my clicker to work. Um, everything in the red is going to be the U.S. Um, and I want to show you that each year, that seventh, eighth, ninth grade, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth, and you see that we start off with life science and build all the way through earth science, physical, biology, chemistry, and physics. But in the Chinese schools, the students revisit each of the basic sciences every year um, in their secondary school experience. You can see how he's laid it out in this, this chart. And he argues that this is the reason that their performance is so strong compared to American students who study just one subject per year. Makes sense to me. Um, but empirical studies have also shown that this spiral curriculum shows very positive outcomes, especially uh, reading, math, and technical skills. So you see how they've done it in China. It starts off with biology, and then the next year they spiral to deeper biology, but they add chemistry and physics. Then they take the chemistry and physics in the ninth grade and really hone in on those skills. And then for the next three years, they do all three in a spiral uh, curriculum. So to me, this just explained it so well, how if we start like in the fundamental skills that I showed you last week, those foundational um, skill sets are used within uh, the context of one level, in our NRS, and then it's compounded in the next. And I, I think that um, if we start looking at our curriculum in this fashion, that I think we really are going to be able to develop um, what you see on the screen is developing those foundational skills, because that's where we're going um, with this Steckbond pre-GED series. And, and I just want to to say that this is the level. Of course, we start back in um, those NRS one, two, and three, but when when our learners hit level four, we really are now starting to lay the groundwork for those foundational skills that are going to be so important when they get to uh, levels five and six and start doing the assessment. So, let me show you um, the first slide for this series, and you can see all around the, the picture. Um, and those of you who have been with me before know that I love looking at a table of contents because I think that you can get a really great idea, a good idea of what's in a book by the table of contents. So um, as we start off, remember this is grade equivalent six through 8.9 NRS four. And you see that it is available in English and in Spanish, this entire series is. And in the middle of the screen, I've started out with the table of contents where you see that it starts off, all each book starts with a pretest for each subject. And that shows the learner's strengths and weaknesses. Learners do not have to work through every lesson in the unit. Um, the pretest results can then be transferred onto an evaluation chart, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. It's part of the uh, instructor edition. And it really puts together your plan of instruction immediately once you have listed what their skill deficiencies are from that pretest. Then, as workers, as your learners work through, the assigned lessons, they're going to find that they have the subject content within the lessons. And you see where I've put science and social studies. Let me highlight this for you right here. The science and the social studies are only uh, are going to have these at work lessons. We'll talk about that in just a second. But they have the units, they have the lessons. Then after each unit and lesson, they're going to have a unit review. And then they're going to have a little mini test so many times where you're going to be able as the instructor to see exactly uh, what they've mastered and what they need to, to go back and look at uh, a second time. Then you have the availability of that post test right after they finished um, and the post-test evaluation chart, which will identify, again, skills that they're not strong in. That you can go back and I'll, I'll show you how that works in just a minute. In the math book, um, there's a whole calculator unit um, or a handbook, actually, not a unit, but it gives you all the details on how to teach your learners about that calculator. Um, and we even have a black line master, a picture of it that you can work with them on. 
Then it does have answers and explanations. Um, these answers are with full explanation. And also there's included a glossary, which really helps explain the words and expressions that are used in the text that they might not be familiar with. So let me jump back up to this at work lesson for a minute, because I want you to understand that that, you know, how the, the our federal office is really um, honed in on having us do contextualized lessons. Well, that's what this at work um, lesson does. You will find an at work lesson at the end of every unit. And these lessons are two page contextualized lessons and they each feature like a specific job. It describes the skill of the, of the job and it includes all those related activities with that job. And, and, and it talks about different related jobs in that field. So for science and social studies, the at work lessons are really great. And I think you'll enjoy working with those. Now, this is a picture of uh, just a screenshot that you'll find in the instructor's edition of that pretest study planner that I was telling you about. So once they've done the pretest, what you'll have uh, for each one of the subjects um, that you see here, all four subjects are listed. But within the content and the skill areas, you'll be able to record what um, which ones they need to go back and and review, or which ones you're you're assigning. I guess this is the pretest. I was jumping ahead to the post test because that that will give you the same thing. It's going to give you the page numbers that address these skills, so that you can assign these page numbers. You've got a start date and a finish date. So it really is a great way um, to, to just check through here to see which ones they need more attention in. There is another page that looks similar to this, but up here it's going to say post test. Um, so or practice test up here instead of pretest. Now, coming soon, one of the best things in adult ed is, is our ability to give practice work, right? I don't think there is an adult ed instructor alive that feels like one book has all of the instruction and practice that our students need. So we have developed this um, workbook that gives you additional practice and it's correlated to the student books. I think once those come out and um, they they are coming soon, but they're designed to be used hand in hand with this pre GED um, series for the student editions. And these workbooks have additional practice items for each student edition lesson. Um, that's going to give your students just a whole lot more opportunity for independent practice on skill application um, for the subjects. Uh, and when you use these together, the student book and the workbooks, the students are really going to have and develop a great foundation that they need to prepare for that GED. And, and even though it says GED, these are basic skills. It could be in preparation for the high set also, um, even though we know that the language is split into reading and, and writing skills. So, but it could be used for those basic skills in either one of those. These workbooks are new. Um, the English workbooks are going to be available in June and the Spanish workbooks are going to be here by the end of the year. So just keep looking for those. This is another wonderful resource. Um, uh, we talked about it last week for the fundamental skills series for the uh, instructors edition and y'all loved it. So I wanted to give this pre GED. Uh, as much attention to, but it is in English and in Spanish, and it's just a great companion book. Um, each subject is, um, it, it has an overview, and you can see that right through here. The overview of the GED test, it's real little, I hope you can see it, but then it focuses on the learner. Uh, some of you may be teaching uh, multiple intelligences. It has some information about that and some different activities. It also talks about teaching critical thinking skills, web step of knowledge model. So there's a lot of interesting and useful information that's in that first section. In the second section, you're going to see that it starts off with each individual book. Here's RLA. 
the key features, the teaching strategies and lessons um, for social studies, science and math all the way through. And then, whoops, excuse me, then this next section, there's all sorts of black line masters. There's um, different things I'm going to show you in a little bit later, um, how those will work in through with your um, curriculum also. Lots of things that are going to help you with your classroom instruction. Uh, this is um, one of the, the, just an overview of the lesson plan. And this is the way it's set up. It's got the lesson plan, similar to what we looked at last week, the related topics. Reading strategies are now included with your, your subject matters. Um, it is great to teach reading strategies in social studies, in science, in your RLA, um, Every subject needs to have reading strategies taught within the structure of the curriculum. Um, it's got articles to read that go with this lesson description. Here again, drawing conclusion, how to use visuals in the classroom, because you need to think about your auditory, your visual, and your kinesthetic learners when you're putting your lessons together. And this thinks, uh, this does something with all of those. There are extended activities um, that if you need different things to go over a concept additionally, it does give you extension activities. And it even has information for your ESL learners that have gotten to this um, pre um, level. Um, a lot of our learners are going to our ESL learners are going to work toward taking that GED or the high set. So it does have strategies for your English language support. And also, if you have struggling learners, it has um, some hints and some activities for you to use with them. So that's pretty much the basic lesson plan. In, in speaking of the ESL, um, this series does a great job of including your ESL learners. They do need a little bit different um, work in terms of what you're using in the classroom. And it talks about using real life uh, materials, excuse me, some games that they can play, the graphic organizers, and then adapting some instructional strategies in reading, and it does for the other subjects too, for your ESL students in this pre-GED level. Excuse me. <clears throat> so let's start off with science, and we know that there are three subject areas, the life science, the earth science and space, um, earth and science space, and physical science. We're going to start off um, just going through for the science, um, the the one lesson that I think will give you an overview of the science and the social studies. Don't have any lessons from social studies because the format is the same. We don't have enough time. Um, so to get an idea of the lesson format for both of those science and social studies, we're going to go through this on the left hand side. You see that it starts off, it's got vocabulary that's going to be used to identify important words um, that they're going to need for understanding the um, text for the comprehension. And then this section is related to the topic. It is so very important that as we work with our learners in each lesson, that we're not just putting a book and saying do pages 54 through 67, um, that we're actually working our students through the lessons to help them uh, understand it. And this relate to the topic does so much of that for you because what it does, it, it does like a pre-reading. Um, it talks about and gives you questions that you can start conversations with. It's always important to know what our students know about a topic. Um, and sometimes, you know, honestly, they've learned it incorrectly. And so this is a time during our discussion phase under Relate the Topic that you can find out if your student has misunderstood something and catch it. And to get them hooked on reading about this, you know, to be honest, you know, bacteria and virus is not the, the 
most uh, um, interesting topic to most of us. It might be for somebody that's going into the medical field, but um, we have to figure out some way of getting our students interested so that they can can relate to what they're reading and really follow through with it. The other thing is that there are reading strategies, like I said earlier, that are just um, scattered throughout the readings for um, the, uh, every lesson. So it really helps the learner engage with the lessons and get them interested when they know they're learning several things at one time. Um, here, I just want to show you that these are the reading strategies in this lesson. Finding details um, in a diagram. So here, this diagram is used and they're gonna teach the students how to find details within that diagram. Here, making inferences so that what they've read, they can make that great um, inference. I had a student come back one time and say, what does the word infer mean? And so that is used so much on the GED test that we just have to, we can't take it for, for um, uh, we, we just can't assume that our students know these words. So it is critical that we teach them. The other thing is that after each little section, they're going to have questions to answer. This one, uh, the upper left, is just to list some details. But it, it is um, engaging that student in this small little information so that you know that they're getting the information right after it. It's very important. And you can consider these little mini lessons within the big lesson and how well they do with answering questions about what they're learning at the time instead of waiting till the very end. But then there are also great um, ways they're going to show you they have um, grasped the material so that you have practiced the vocabulary. Um, it's not just, um, answer, you know, multiple choice, it's um, uh, matching, it's fill in the blank, it's a short answer. It really gives them a variety of ways to show that they've known the information. Right after that, here's another section that is called the science, and this is only in the science section. So this, this pre-GD science book has this science practice focus. And these are just extra pages that provide more practice, drawing conclusions from data, making predictions on evidence and applying scientific models and methods. These are things that are, you know, more common to the scientific field. And it just gives your students more of an opportunity to learn the skills and predicting. And then here's a page that reflects that new book when we get it, the practice exercises, because you can see it's just that. Through the language, we know that these are the skills that they have to know on the language. So we have subject verb, all the rules, the writing process, um, different historical documents for informational reading, fiction, and then knowing the main idea and inferences and all that. Um, I chose this lesson because I thought it was um, a little bit different from the usual that we show with subject verb agreement and all that, but this is the writing process and it's lesson 27. And I wanted to show you right up here, these are the things, the five steps of writing that they're gonna cover in this lesson 27. And you can see step one, and all the information, they give you definitions, they give examples, they do the skill practice, <clears throat> and they even give you different ways to do things. Like in organizing ideas, this is gonna teach your student that you don't just have to know how to outline. Sometimes it's more fun to do an idea map. So these things are all included. Here's the second step. Again, skill practice, more information, skills, all the way through, and I'm just gonna go on through these. This is the third step of revising. They give you a revising checklist that's very important so that your students are being methodical about it. Another checklist on editing, and then the final step four and step five. Here is uh, the next page would be that GED extended rubric uh, response for the rubric. Um, it's very important. Let your students know what they're being judged over. So for that extended response, these are the criteria right here that you're gonna have to know or be 
judged on the, the skills that you're going to need to to have a good score on that extended response. And again, here's lesson 27, the lesson plan and all the different ways you can incorporate that in in your process. This is the new workbook page again. Practice 27, the writing process with all the different activities that you can include to give your student extra practice. Um, in the instructor's edition, here's a copy of the rubric. So that extended response, the three different traits that they have to really write to or toward uh, or for um, is listed here. I would print this off and I'd go over it with the students so that they would know how to do it. Different, again, this is from the instructor's edition, uh, different ways that you can, Black Line Masters already set up for you so that you can use them, print them off and use them in class. The math, we're gonna buzz through this real quick, the whole numbers, <clears throat> fractions, you know you're going to get your concepts, you're going to get how to read these things, ratio and proportion, and algebra are all in that. Um, I chose this lesson because it shows where certain times it's going to show you that the student can use the calculator. Um, it's going to teach them how to use the square roots, and anytime it's appropriate, like on the test, um, they can get used to using the calculator, and sometimes they won't be able to use the calculator. Again, lots of uh, practice. Anytime you have this color up here, this is instructional, and the practice is listed in the black. Great graphics. Look at that, how you can teach them how many boxes you could get in a box truck. Lesson reviews come right after your lesson. I said that when we were looking at the table of content, after the lesson reviews, you're gonna have your unit review, and this would be unit review for lessons one, two, three, and four for whole numbers. And then there's a little mini test that is GED practice so that you're sure they're gonna be able to, to be successful on that test. And here again, the new book will have this type of practice that corresponds with that um, uh, lesson four, but it's practice four. Here's the analysis <clears throat> chart for the review. So those are the lessons, lesson four that we were doing for the review. And here are the books, the analysis chart where it tells you which units those were, were in, what, what lessons. Social studies, um, the different subjects on the social studies, of course, history, geography, our civics and government, and our economics. So we have all of those listed. And I didn't put any lessons in here. I told you we didn't have time to do lessons for all of them. So what I did want to show you, we're here are some black line masters. Here's some maps that you can use that are in the instructor's edition uh, for the social studies. This again, just the table of contents for your instructor's edition, different teaching strategies for each lesson. And then to look at some of the things, there are games in here. On the very left, Here's bingo. You already got a, a, a set made for you. All you have to do is add the answers and make up the questions. Here's a Jeopardy template and a, a Battle Shield template. Um, and there's instructions for this too. So many times I don't think we, we help our students with the uh, reading skills as much as we need to. Here is um, a timed reading grid so that your students can include uh, and in increase their fluency, their speed and accuracy with their reading. And then explanations for more games over here. There is a book that's called the GED, a pre-GED complete preparation. It's all four subjects in one. And these are the things that are included. The pre and the post test are still within each content. It is written on that five through um, eight grade equivalency, uh, critical thinking skills and the calculator, complete answers and explanations with the glossary. So that was a whirlwind. And I know that some of you may not be able to stay past this 30 minutes, but if we have any questions or you have any comments or anything, I'd love to, to have those now. 
Uh, we don't have anything in the chat pod, so I think we're good. Well, okay, then. Um, if you have any need or anything, you will get, um, let me, uh, a email, the follow-up email soon. Just go ahead and click on the certif my certificate in the lower left-hand corner, and it will send you a certificate for attendance today. And if you have any questions about any of the products that I just showed you, any of the uh, print material that you'd like to see in a little bit more in depth or a little bit closer. Um, just reach to us, uh, reach out to us at support at aztecsoftware.com. Thank you so much for attending today and I enjoyed doing this. I said last time we wouldn't be here next week. I will be.